Thank you for joining Antelope Christian Center. We believe in the power of worship and the power of foundation of faith upon God's Word. Our vision and our ministry is built upon loving God and loving others. Praise the Lord. When we pray, we praise the Lord. When we pray, we remember His Word. Go to God's Word and pray His Word. A. Admit your slips. It's kind of like a cool way of saying, confess to the Lord. I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to read your mail, but this is a good reminder for us that we need to confess our sins. Why? Because he is faithful and just to forgive us. Why yield to him? When you pray, one of the most important parts of prayer is for you to stop, pause, wait, listen, meditate, yield to him. E, express the need. This is where you come to God and say, God, I need healing. God, I'm praying for my brother. I'm praying for my sister. I'm praying for this state and this country. And then R, you respond in thanks. A big part of prayer is giving thanks to the Lord. You know, when whenever I, I'm with my kids, I, I give to them and I get to them. And I always make sure they say, thank you. Why? Because it it's always a relationship. If they get from me and they don't acknowledge me or that gift, if they don't say thank you, it's just an object, a thing. But when you acknowledge the source of your joy, the source of your peace, you say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done, for all that you've given me. So you're invited to join me every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning here in this sanctuary from 7 to 9 a.m. If you're not here, guess what? God is going to be wherever you're at. So once you start praising him, there he is with you. So the priority of praise. One thing about praise for us, and we've done this as soon as we walked in here together as the family of God. What did we do? We praised the Lord. When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, here in Matthew chapter 6, the disciples were we're lying to know how do we effectively pray. And Jesus begins with this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He starts with praise. He starts with praise. I, 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 I always get excited when I meet people or when I see people. And whenever I approach people or they approach me, we face each other, right? We, we face each other and we greet one another. That's the first thing we do. And I believe praise is such an important part of prayer that if we don't praise him first, it's as if we turn our back when we talk to him. We're not acknowledging Almighty God. We're not acknowledging who he is. Is he your savior? Yes, he is. Is he your friend? Yes, he is. The priority of praise. It's important to praise the Lord. Now, I want to go back a chapter in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Because this is the story of Hannah. And I'm going to use this story of Hannah's life of prayer to help us recognize, help us understand why Hannah does this prayer of praise. And in chapter 1, verse 1 of 1 Samuel, it says, is, there is a man named Elkanah who lived in Ramah in the region of Zuf in the hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Ohu, son of Zuf, of Ephraim. 
I want to pause here just to highlight this because you've seen this before in the Bible, a list of father's names, right? The son of this, the son of son of Jeroham, and then the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu. You've seen this in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. Why? It's to point us to the overarching power and plan of God in our lives. In the, in the book of Matthew, it lists all these ancestors, son of, son of, son of, all the way to Jesus. Because it points us to how God is using his plan to save the world. And here, I just want to just remind us with it. There is this line of sons. God has a plan for Elkanah and his wife, Hannah, and then their son, who will be Samuel. I'm reminded of, of my own life. I'm Avelino Jr. My dad is Avelino Sr. So he's the first, I'm the second. My son, Avelino the third, is the third. We're going to keep that going. But I was reminded at the cemetery, uh, I was visiting uh, our family ancestors and my grandmother and my grandfather and my other grandfather. And my other grandfather, my dad's dad, the dad who named Avelino first, um, his first name was Pastor. Pastor. Very Spanish, actually, Pastor. But I, once I saw that name, I was instantly reminded of how God used my grandfather in my life. I remember a time when he was living with us, and he would work in the backyard, and, and he would come in, coming in to eat. And also, I remember every time I walked by his room, every time he'd be sitting down, reading his word, and praying. Almost every time. My grandfather would do that, do that. Little did I know that how much God has plans for us. And he uses people like your grandfather, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your own children as part of his plan in your life. And if that's not a reason to praise the Lord, then I don't know what is. If you can take a moment to pause and think about people who made a God impact in your life. Think of how you got here to church today. Think of how that happened. How did you come to church today? Well, first, God had to show you. God had to deliver you. God had to save you. My own dad shares me this story. He got saved at Trinity Church on Del Paso Boulevard. He shared me this story that the pastor asked people, do you want Jesus to be your personal Savior? And he would invite people up, and he would answer that call. Get up, walk to the front. He would share to me, and he would say, I was the only one there at the front. But I'm thinking, you know what? God's plan. God used my grandfather. God used my father to be a witness of his power in my life. Not only my grandfather, not only my father, but even my own sister. My sister. Siblings. You think they, they think they know everything, right? Well, I was at I was doing uh, helping out at church. We had this house church, and I would I would lead worship. I would help out, and I would I would become very prominent in our little house church. And then one day, my sister came up to me. And says, "You're doing all this stuff, right? Why aren't you going to Bible college? Why aren't I going to Bible college?" It was her that prompted my heart go to Bible college. It was her that pointed me. She's like, you know what? You kind of should be going this way. See, God has an overarching plan in your life. Now, how can you 
hear his plan? How can you see his plan? Well, first, we need to start praising God. That's first priority. Why do we praise God first? It's so that we can keep hearing the voice of God. I'm sharing a lot of family stories, and my mom and dad are here today, so you can confirm with them if it's true or not. But my mom would share this story to other people, and when, when me and my younger sister, she's about a year and a half younger than me, would grow up, and uh, we would, you know, go to the store and everything, and every time we'd come out the store, we wanted shotgun, right? Passenger sheet. And we, you know, we didn't do the whole shotgun and then I, I have the seat. What me and my sister did was we would run straight to our car and whoever could touch that door first gets that seat. And so every time, every time, I want to be first, I want to be first. And then, little, you know, I, I think back now and I'm thinking, wow, that when my, me and my sister would grow up, we would end up being the fastest people in our school. And I'm thinking it's because we kept running to that door. We kept running to be first. We kept running and running to be first. That's how we got fast. How can you be more in the presence of God? How can you be more in tune with God? If he's not first in your life. So when you start praising him, that means, God, you are first. You are number one in my life. The more and more you prioritize God in your life, you begin to see and experience the blessing as Hannah did the answered prayer in your life, the priority of praise. All right, so we, we're still on 1 Samuel chapter 1. And in verse 3, it says, Each year Elkanah, this is the husband, would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of Heaven's armies at the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at that time were the two sons of Eli. So on verse 4, on those days, Elkanah presented his sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to Penina and each of her children. See, Elkanah had two wives. That's already a problem. But uh, he had two wives, one, one Penina and the other Hannah. And Penina, she had many children with Elkanah, but Hannah did not. And so in verse 5, although Elkanah, he loved Hannah, he would give her only one choice por portion because the Lord had given her no children. So Penina would taunt Hannah, make fun of her, because the Lord had kept her from having children. Some translation says, closed her womb. Year after year, it was the same. Penina would taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. And each time, Hannah would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. So why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why aren't you eating? Don't be downhearted. Just because you have no children, you have me. Isn't that better than having ten sons? I want to pause there because that's, that's a, a really good picture of a husband and wife conversation, right? You know, there's there's things going on and and and, and the wife says I, I this and this and so the man, of course, let's fix the problem. Let's use logic and reason and we're going to get this fixed, right? And so <laughs> El Cata would say, "You know what? I yeah, you don't have any sons, but you got me. All the ladies here is like, oh, no, that's not going to work. That is not going to work. Isn't that 
better than ten sons? So in verse 9, 1 Samuel chapter 1, once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up, went to pray. Eli, Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was deep in anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. This is a moment in Hannah's prayer that I want to point out to you. Because we're talking about the priority of praise. Making, praising God number one. Making God first and foremost in your prayers and even in your life. And here is at this moment, Hannah does something. He said, she says that it's not going to be about what I get anymore. It's about what you get, God. It's not about what I'm going to get. It's what I'm going to give to you. You're saying, yes, pastor. That's, that's awesome. That's prayer right there. You walk in these doors into church on a great Sunday. We're going to praise the Lord. Let me ask you, when you walk in, are you thinking about what you're going to get? Or are you thinking about what you're going to give the Lord? Are you going to sacrifice to him? Or are you just looking to, I need, I need something, this, I need some of this, I need some of that. Here Hannah goes, you know what, if God provides for me, I'm going to give it back to God. I'm going to acknowledge that the source of joy is not having, but it's all, but it's giving to him. So in verse 12, she was praying to the Lord. Eli watched her, seeing her lips moving, but hearing no sound. So she was, she was deep in prayer. Eli was watching her. Her lips were, were moving, but he couldn't hear a sound. And so he thought she had been drinking. So he says, must you come here drunk? Throw away your wine. I'm just astonished that he would think that way because it's as if I would say, hey, you, you got a bottle? You need to get out of here right now. How dare you come to church drunk? I'm not thinking about how the Holy Spirit's moving. I'm just thinking that you are here to cause some problems. But here she kind of sets it straight for Eli. She says, oh no, sir, I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger. But I am very discouraged. I was pouring my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman, for I've been praying out of anguish and sorrow. So in that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. We find in this story that she will be miraculously provided a, a son. God answers her prayer, names the son Samuel, and out of that time with the Lord, God provides, and then she goes into another prayer and praises the Lord. But the next part of praise in prayer is the presence. And so in Acts chapter 16, you know this story about Paul and Silas doing the work of the Lord. But the other people weren't having it. They didn't like it, so they put him in prison. They beat him up, and they beat him up, and they beat him up, and then they put him in prison. And then in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, this happens. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. 
Suddenly there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. A reason why we praise the Lord in our prayers is His presence. Is His presence. Once we start praising the Lord, you will experience His presence. The Bible says He inhabits the praises of His people. So when you start praising, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. The presence of God, when you start proclaiming him in his greatness, in his faithfulness, has he been faith? Has he ever been faithful to you? Raise your hand. Has he ever healed you? Raise your hand. Oh, you guys should be praising right now. Has he ever provided your need? Raise your hand. That's all. And then you experience the presence. Now I'll have to admit this to you, because it's not all roses and daisies, as you know that. A lot of times we get into this prayer like Hannah because we've been taunted for years and years and years. We've been struggling for years and years and years. It's been in our face how inadequate we are or how, how bad we are. It's been, been in our faces all the time and then we feel this pain and anguish. And then what do you do? Pray. You go into his presence. Paul and Silas were just beaten up. They were beaten up, and it was midnight. I would be asleep. But they decided to praise the Lord. And when you're in his presence, praising him, God hears, God answers, God inhabits. God shows you the way. Have you ever prayed and God met you where you were at? I'm always encouraged knowing that people pray. A friend of mine prayed here this past week. He wanted to pray because he is going through a lot. Family, health, and the moment he got in here, he prayed. And then he would text me and he would say, Pastor, I just heard from the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's what you want, right? You want the presence of God. You want him in your life. This is the power of prayer. And finally, the prize of praise. How much time do I got? Two hours? The prize of praise is this. Here in Psalm 19, you could even do the whole chapter if you want, because it's about this great prize. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight to the living. What you have in your hands is one of the greatest prizes of all. His word. His holy word. And when you pray and you will have time in his word and you hear him through his word, it brings joy. It brings peace. There's a reason why praise is a prize in prayer. Praise is a, another way of saying worth. It's worth it. Is it worth it to pray? Yes. Is it worth it to praise the Lord? Yes. Because of God. I want to say to this, that every time you pray and praise, the worth keeps going up 
and up and up. Have you ever noticed that every time you pray, your relationship with God gets better and better and better? It's worth it. It's worth it. Things in this world will just keep going down. Negative, 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 negative. But when you pray and praise, as if a positive keeps adding, adding, adding to you and your heart for the Lord. Can you tell I'm excited about prayer? You should be too. So when you pray, when you pray, think about praising the Lord, praising Him. You could even just walk down an aisle of Walmart and just say, start praising the Lord. There are crazy people there anyway. <laughs> but when they see your... When they see your craziness, they, they see what? Love. Thank you for joining Antelope Christian Center. We believe in the power of worship and the power of foundation of faith upon God's word. Our vision and our ministry is built upon loving God and loving others.